Once you're ready to really start configuring and building your site, the place you'll want to start is Content Configuration. Here, we'll go to our main website. We have only one option listed here because we selected single store mode earlier. If you don't have single store mode turned on, you may have a few options here. We're going to edit our main website. And this is a very important configuration page, partly because a lot of stock settings are found on this page. For instance, if we view our current home page, which we actually haven't taken a look at yet, this is what it will look like. And you can see that the home page just says home page. You have a message that says CMS homepage content goes here. Up here we have default welcome message. Obviously, these are things we want to change. A lot of that is found on this content in configuration page. So we do have the option to select our theme here. We're not going to worry about this right now. We're going to come back to themes later. If we scroll down a bit, we want to look at other settings. First, we have HTML head, and we click on any of these groups to expand them and see all of our options. The HTML head settings are really big for search engines and web browsers to understand basic things about your website, such as what it's called and general info about your store. The favicon icon, if you're unfamiliar with that, is the little icon that shows up in the tab of the web page that you have pulled up and of any other web pages that you have in the background. So this little Magento logo right here, that's the Magento favicon. To put our own store's favicon on our store, we will upload that file right here where it says favicon icon. You simply click upload. This is assuming, of course, that you do have a favicon icon to use. Usually these are in .ico format and they're 32 by 32 or 16 by 16 pixels. You may have noticed that I uploaded a JPEG file for the favicon. Usually these are in ICO format and usually that would be a fine thing to do. However, the current version of Magento 2 is a little bit buggy in that respect and it says it doesn't recognize .ico files even though it specifically says they're allowed here. So if you do have that problem, you can upload a JPEG or a PNG or something else and you should be fine. Next we have the default title. Now this is not technically the title of your website, though in many cases you are going to use the title of your website or store as it may be. What this is specifically is the title that shows up by default for the tab, again, when you have a page of your store open in a web browser. So instead of using Magento Commerce, which is of course the stock setting that it comes with, you want to use Again, in 99% of cases, the name of your website or store. For us, we're going to be running a store called Coffee Bean Central for this tutorial. So that's what I'm going to use. And what this means is if the system doesn't have any other designated thing to show in the title, it's going to use this default, Coffee Bean Central. So if our homepage wasn't told to use homepage as its title, then it would default back to this. We also have title prefix and title suffix. This will apply to most all pages on the website. And what this does is it places some text after whatever the specific title for that given page is. So it might say homepage dash or pipe character coffee bean central if that's what we put as our suffix or we could have something come before. Usually what you'll do for the prefix or suffix, I'm going to do a suffix in my case. Usually what you're going to do is you'll type something like a dash or even more commonly a pipe character, then a space, and then the title of your store. Some people pr prefer for the title of their store to show up first, then the pipe character, then the actual title of whatever page it is they're looking at. So if we were looking at a page for, say, Sumatra coffee beans, then it might say something like Sumatra coffee beans, coffee bean central up here in the tab. Whether you want this to come before in this format or afterward in this format, also better to put a space now that I think about it before you put the pipe character. 
That's a matter of preference and it's a matter of marketing, whether you think people viewing the titles in a list in, for instance, say a search engine are going to be more likely to be drawn to the product name than your store, or if your store name is going to catch their eye more prominently, then that's an argument for putting it as a prefix. Again, it comes down to what's best for your site and what you prefer. For us, once again, we're going to do space, pipe character, space, coffee bean central as the suffix for our HTML titles. Then you have the default description, which is another thing that's mostly going to be used by search engines when it shows your website or it shows a page from your website in a list of search results. The description is the little bit of description text that appears below the title of the website. And again, this is going to vary on a lot of pages, but by default, we're going to set something that it'll fall back to if it doesn't have anything else to use. Let's just go with something like coffee bean central is the greatest source for coffee beans on the web. Then you have your default keywords, which are not as important to search engines nowadays, but it doesn't hurt just to go ahead and put in a few basic things. We can put in coffee, comma, coffee beans, comma, that's maybe Arabica. And we can go ahead and just do e-commerce if we want. Scripts and style sheets. This is where you can include various JavaScript files or style sheet files. If you don't know what that means, then basically just stay away from this for now. This is kind of a little bit more technical area of configuration. If you do know what scripts and style sheets are, then you already know what this area is going to do and how to use it. If not, don't worry about it. Just stay away from it. It's not going to bother you to not use this. You'll mostly use this only in very specific situations. Then we have the option to display a demo store notice. Now, our website is on a temporary domain, so I'm going to keep this turned off. However, if you are working on a live domain and you are afraid that people might stumble across your website and try ordering something when you're halfway through building the website, you might want to turn this to yes. And there will be a big notice at the top if someone happens to visit your site that says something along the lines of this site is under construction, no orders will actually be placed.